If you habitually buy the likes of BMW, Audi and Mercedes, it'll take some mental adjustment to opt for the Alfa Romeo 159. Less buttoned down, yet stunningly seductive and impeccably tailored, saloon and sports wagon estate models offer a class act that's been strengthened with the adoption of a torquey 1750 TBI petrol model and a fast but frugal 2 litre JTDM diesel. The concept of keeping up with the Joneses is a major driving force in the automotive industry. Though in Alfa Romeo's case, it's more a question of keeping up with the Mullers, the Schmitz and the Brauns. The Italian brand Stylish 159 does, after all, have the unenviable task of taking on massive sellers like uh, Mercedes C-Class, BMW 3 Series and Audi's A4 in the compact executive class. Encouraging sales achieved by its 156 predecessor hinted that this was possible, but gains over that car were needed and achieved in areas like uh, styling, perceived build quality and interior space. It wasn't enough. Since its launch in 2006, the 159 has remained a distinctly left field choice, despite Alpha's continual efforts to improve it. First with a responsive Qtronic automatic gearbox for turbo diesel models, then with a sporty looking TI trim level. Now on top of that, by late 2009, the 150 brake horsepower 1.9 litre JTD diesel and 2.2 litre petrol JTS models that generated most sales were no longer being seen as efficient enough by crucial company buyers. Alpha's response was to introduce a couple of far more efficient power plants. They're good, but good enough to trouble the Germans. That's what we're here to find out. The number 1750 has quite a resonance for Alpha, evoking memories amongst the Alfisti going back to the classic 1750 Bellina model. Now this 1750 TBI 159 variant probably won't achieve classic status, but it is hugely impressive thanks to the way via variable valve timing, direct fuel injection and turbocharging, it offers V6 style pulling power combined with high-tech 197 brake horsepower four-cylinder efficiency. If you slick through the six-speed gearbox, there's 320 newton meters of torque to take you from rest to 60 in just 7.7 seconds on the way to a top speed of 147 miles an hour. Perhaps more tellingly, the fifth gear 25 to 62 mile an hour overtaking increment takes just 11 and a half seconds, a flat torque curve in other words perfect for confident overtaking and flexible long distance driving. Easily enough of course to put the older dirtier 183 brake horsepower 2.2 JTS petrol unit firmly in the shade and to provide a more sensible option than the range topping 257 brake horsepower 3.2 litre petrol V6. It's the same with this car's other must have engine, the 2 litre JTDM diesel. Now this is Alpha's first real move forward on this front since the brand was uh, first to pioneer more efficient common rail diesels back in 1997. Having been matched or overtaken by virtually every brand since, this 170 brake horsepower diesel unit is a fine return to form. It's 8.8 .8 second 0 to 62 mile an hour sprint time, just a second off the far thirstier 207 brake horsepower 2.4 litre JTDM diesel and of course miles ahead of the older 120 and 150 brake horsepower 1.9 litre multi-jet diesel units. And on the move around the twisty stuff, well, Alpha enthusiasts would doubtless love to see the Mark develop a modern rear-wheel drive sports saloon to take on the BMW 3 Series. But in an era where the brand must share so many parts with group partners Fiat, that's not really on. Still, the front-driven handling can be rewarding, especially since the steering was tweaked for more feedback. And of course, the all-wheel drive 3.2-litre uh, V6 Q4 flagship has an advantage over some of its rivals when it comes to all-weather security. The 
159 remains a very sharp piece of styling with more overtaking presence than almost any BMW. The gimletide headlamps and razor sharp front grille looking agreeably intimidating. A kind of junior Maserati Quattroporte. You can see why some Latin motor enthusiasts might think so. The rear end is genuinely tricky to differentiate from that of the old 156 at first glance, but the side view shows sharper creasing and swage lines, plus a longer front end. As cohesive a piece of penmanship as the 156 was, the 159 is a better balanced car. Inside, a cabin that looked smart back at launch in 2006 is now showing a little age, but it's still artfully designed and sturdily built with some nice metallic finishes to brighten up the acres of black plastic. Rear cabin space isn't great. You wouldn't want to be a third adult sat in the middle here for any great distance, but it'll be adequate for most buyers, close to the admittedly mediocre standards set in this respect by rivals from BMW and Audi. The same applies to the 405 litre boot. And though in standard form, you can't fold down the rear seats, you do at least have a ski hatch here for poking through longer items. If that's not enough, this sports wagon estate offers a seat's flat capacity of 1,235 litres. At the wheel, it all feels very driver orientated, just as an Alpha should be. The dials cowled and the dashboard angled, drawing your attention almost equally to readouts for the turbo boost, water temperature and fuel level, just like a 1969 Spider and countless alphas since. You punch a classic starter button on the dashboard to begin. And though the uh, resultant roar may lack the sporty rasp you might be hoping for, the refinement matches the quality of the rest of the car. Prices sit mainly in the 20 to 30,000 pound bracket common to this class of car with a premium of around £1,100 if you want the sport wagon estate variant rather than the saloon. Uh, rivals? Well, uh, theoretically the obvious ones are the Audi A4, BMW 3 Series and Mercedes C-Class German alternatives. But in reality, 159 buyers are perhaps more likely to be people more prepared to consider left field alternatives like, say, uh, Lexus's IS, Volvo's S60 or Saab's 9.3. As I've suggested, though this car was launched with charismatic 183 brake horsepower 4 and 257 brake horsepower 3.2 litre V6 petrol engines, uh, plus uh, 1.9 and 2.4 litre diesels, the units to which buyers should these days uh, direct their attention are really two standout ones, a uh, 197 brake horsepower 1750 TBI petrol power plant, that's the one I've got here, or a 170 brake horsepower 2 litre JTDM turbo diesel. It'll help at a dealer level that equipment levels remain strong. Expect uh, cruise control, alloy wheels, dual zone air conditioning and uh, four powered windows across the range, while sportier versions add features like 17 inch alloy wheels and a, a more dynamic flavour for the seats, the steering wheel and the dials. Now safety wise, there are seven airbags, including a driver's knee airbag and front seat head restraints that move in an accident to minimize whiplash injuries. Then there are all kinds of electronic systems. The VDC, Vehicle Dynamics Control System and ASR Anti-Slip Regulator deal with your traction and stability control issues. You've got ABS brakes with electronic brake force distribution to maximize their effectiveness and uh, hydraulic brake assist, HBA, to help you out if you're in an accident situation and you haven't pressed the pedal hard enough in an emergency stop. You've also got uh, a hill holder clutch to simplify those uphill starts. The latest engines have made quite a difference to this 159 when it comes to running costs. The 170 brake horsepower 2 litre JTDM 16 valve diesel, for example, reduces CO2 figures over its predecessor right down to 142 grams per kilometre, uh, with 52.3 miles to the gallon on the combined cycle. And that has reduced its company car tax banding down to a relatively affordable Group E. It's a similar story when it comes to the 1750 TBI petrol model that I'm driving here, which manages 34.9 miles to the gallon 
on the combined cycle and 189 grams per kilometer of CO2. Um, and that's uh, a massive six band drop in company car tax banding to band J over its dirtier 2.2 litre JTS petrol predecessor. There's a, a lengthy 21,000 miles between service intervals on this petrol TBI model too. The 3.2 litre V6 petrol model, of course, uh, remains a much pricier proposition. It's 77 pence per mile uh, running cost figure, uh, significantly more than, say, a comparable BMW 325i M Sport. But you'll claw back a few pounds when it comes to insuring the car, if you're insuring it yourself, as premiums tend to be slightly lower with 159s. If Alfa Romeo's UK dealer network can get enough executives behind the wheel of either this 1750 TBI petrol model or the 2-litre JTDM 16-valve diesel with its 170 brake horsepower, then they stand a chance of rejuvenating this 159's dwindling fortunes in the compact executive sector. Now, that's a big ask in the face of rivals as talented as BMW 3 Series and Audi's A4, but with fuel, CO2 and performance figures that are now class competitive, they have at last been given the tools to do the job. And this does remain a beguiling choice. Buying a new car should, at least in part, be about the way it makes you feel. And few cars in this sector engender a warmer, fuzzier feeling of self-satisfaction than an Alfa Romeo 159. Now that compact executive buyers can choose one without heart-ruling head, learning Italian has never been more appealing.